Several presentations ago, we talked about the annual precipitation that falls in Chautauqua County. What it adds up to in the upland area is about 42 inches per year, and on the Erie Lake Plain, about 37 inches a year. If we use the upland numbers, that means that if you own an acre of land, an acre of land is about 100, 210 feet by 210 feet, uh, that you get somewhere in the neighborhood of a million, 140,000 gallons of water a year on your acre of land. And we suggested that 40 to 60 percent of it, depending upon when it falls, runs off. Another 5 to 15 percent, depending upon the soil conditions, uh, may percolate down into the groundwater and eventually return to the surface water. And the remainder, somewhere between 20 and 30 percent, disappears through evapotranspiration. So what happens to that 40 to 60 percent? Well, for years and years, we really didn't pay attention to it. In fact, we didn't even care about it. Uh, but we do today, and I'm going to try to describe to you a changing view by the public, by political people, by planners, and I hope the whole nation, and that is the question of wetlands and floodplains. One of the things that happened as I came into the planning field was every year my friend in Kansas City would tell me how the cost of the floodplain damage in Kansas City had increased. And finally, he said, you know, the reason for it is we keep building more and more in the floodplain, and we don't move out of the floodplain. And the people in Kansas City proudly mark the high water marks on their buildings, a story and a half or whatever it might be. Uh, and that was the case. We just kept building in the floodplains. We then looked at floodplain areas as places for landfills, for dumps, to get rid of the old tree stumps, this is also the case of the wetlands. In almost every instance, we looked at the wetlands as, as something to be corrected. In fact, uh, in doing some research for the Jamestown Audubon Society, I looked for the definition of wetlands in a 1952 edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. And I was shocked to find that there was no definition of wetlands. There was no definition of marsh. There was no definition of swamp that amounted to anything. Uh, there was a definition of bog, uh, but we don't use the term bog very much. And what a bog is in the United States, it's something else when you get to the British Isles. But we didn't have it in our consciousness that wetlands and floodplains were anything but something to be corrected. And I can give you examples of that here in Chautauqua County. Uh, most of the waterfront of the city of Dunkirk, the flagpole park, was all an area that was part of a floodplain area, and it's all totally filled in and reclaimed. Uh, if you go down and look at Viewcoat, uh, most of Viewcoat was designated on the 1904 U.S. geological map as a swamp or a wetlands, and there were a number of areas around Chautauqua Lake that were designated in that area. The whole area on the west side of the city of Jamestown, bordering on the outlet, and then which becomes the Shattuckoyne River, uh, while it had a history of having one of the largest rose garden and rose distributors located there many, many years ago, kind of the, the early Jackson and Perkins, it basically was a wetland. Uh, and of course, those of you that have a memory know that uh, the city dump, and there's no other description for it, but dump uh, was along that area. And of course, over the years, they have now reclaimed it and covered it totally. Uh, but that is the way we treated wetlands. Uh, if you go back and look at the first hotel uh, created, the Fluvanna House, the people got to the Fluvanna House by going up uh, Airport Hill Road and out across Moon and then back down Town Line Road because they couldn't get through the wetlands and the marsh and the non-bearing soils that were in that area. It wasn't until years and years later I realized that the Fluvanna House was established in 1836. Uh, if you look at where the railroad was built, uh, Devin Taylor was talking to me the other day about some areas where the railroad kept settling and it was a, a very difficult time, uh, but it was a wetland, it was a marsh, it was a muck. Uh, we always thought of wetlands in a negative 
consideration. We always thought of flood, well, we didn't really think of floodplains. That's probably part of the problem. Uh, we also have another area that we could talk about uh, a little bit called coastal zone. And because New York State and Chautauqua County is a boundary water on Lake Erie, we have a coastal zone concept that we have to deal with. But when you looked around the nation, in terms of water resources, for generations, the solution to pollution was dilution. In fact, the state of California is still allowed to empty some of its industrial wastes and municipal wastes into the uh, Pacific Ocean, lightly treated, because there's enough water there to dilute it, and the Congress has agreed with that. But for the rest of us, the Congress has said, we want to create our waters or correct our waters and bring them back so that they are swimmable and fishable every day of the year. And I think that's a good goal, even though right now, Part of our administration in Washington is trying to break that goal down. Wetlands. If you want a sense of wetlands in Chautauqua County, we really didn't pay any attention to them until the state of New York passed its own wetland legislation and designated some 300 wetlands in Chautauqua County, covering some 6.6% of the area of the county. And I have a map on the easel over here if we can switch to that and, and look at it. Uh, this is a 1955 soil map of Chautauqua County, and the blue-gray areas exclusive of the lake are lake-laid soils. That's what they were interpreted as at that time. Uh, those basically are areas in which the vast majority of the wetlands of Chautauqua County exist. They are extensive. They have not been respected, and if you were to look at the report that was drafted by the County Planning Department in 1966, you would find that the majority of the dumps of the municipalities were in wetlands, floodplains, or along stream banks throughout the county. But when I'm talking about wetlands through the rest of this presentation, I'm talking about, in most part, the blue-gray areas. However, the definition of wetlands has changed, and we're going to uh, look at what has happened with some of the legislation in that particular area. The county as a whole, there was no government dealing with wetlands or floodplains in 1960. Uh, None of the jurisdictions were interested in it. It was too politically a hot issue to say to some people, you don't have the right to build in the floodplain. Uh, we built in the floodplains. The people had a number of complaints, and on an annual basis in some areas, the people said, save us. And it happened annually, or maybe every five years, depending upon where you were. And basically, in the upland, we have some flooding on the Lake Erie Plain, but not too much. However, one of the streams that does flood happens to be straddled by one of the largest mobile home parks in the northern part of the county. Uh, we weren't thinking. We weren't thinking about the, all of that water that I've talked about. We're, we're talking about, I don't, I don't know that any of us can really comprehend the amount of water that falls as, as rain or as snow. Uh, Interesting point, uh, last Thursday, uh, I went out and I measured the water content of the snow that's sitting in the Mayville area. And I have a sampling area that I think is rather representative of all of the Chautauqua Lake watershed. And there were 2.4 inches of moisture of water in the 16 inches of snow that were in my sampling area. Realize that that snow has been packing down for several days, of course. Back to the wetlands. The wetlands support, in the vast majority of instances, a lot of our migratory waterfowl, although Chautauqua Lake plays a leading role in that also. The wetland areas, uh, whether they are a marsh or a swamp, uh, in the dead of winter, if you want to see a robin, go to the wetland areas and get into the deepest, darkest swamp. And I'll guarantee you that there's some robins in there eating the uh, plants that are growing in, in that water in that particular wetland. But we had no concern for them. Uh, we drove over them. We filled them in. Same way with floodplains. 
fact, one of the problems with the floodplain management is that we decide to fill in, then where does the water that we've deplaced go? It goes downstream or it's held upstream. And so anytime anybody works or does something in a floodplain that takes out any of the capacity of the floodplain, that responsibility of that amount of water has got to move someplace else. So in some instances we've moved flood problems upstream, in some instances we move flood problems downstream. Let's look at what happens in wetlands and in the literature. Uh, I couldn't find definitions in 1952. Now I've got more definitions than I know what to do with, and I don't even know where to start. Uh, basically, this is because we have become more attuned to our environment. We need to be even more attuned than we are at this particular moment. Because we've got people that are saying the rules and the regulations that we've got in place today are already too stringent, they're taking away people's property rights. Let me tell you about wetland purchasing in Chautauqua County. This is amazing. Uh, if you go to the assessment rolls and look at the assessment rolls throughout Chautauqua County, a wetland has a value of somewhere around $100 an acre. I'm not going to split hairs, but around $100 an acre. But yet when the Nature Conservancy or the State of New York goes to look at it, if you look at the property transactions, you'll find that the Nature Conservancy or whoever wants to purchase wetlands is going to pay somewhere between $500 and $750 an acre. But the people that own it don't feel it's of any use to them and it has no value and the assessors have acquiesced to that that it's only worth $100 an acre. And based on our property tax rates, uh, it would be pretty burdensome to own 100 acres of swamp and not get any productivity back from it. Back to the wetland. We have a marsh. A marsh is a wetland that has standing water in it year round. It does it above the surface of the water. A wetland is also an area in which the ground is saturated year round. A wetland may be a woods, it may be a thicket, uh, it depends upon what you're looking at in terms of plant community and elevation. I can tell you that the wetlands are not only on those areas that were shown in gray, on uh, blue-gray on the map, but I have a friend that owns a hilltop. And his hilltop is covered with sphagnum moss, and the sh soil is very shallow, 18 inches at the most, and it becomes saturated very easily on the top of a hill. And maybe some of you read the article not too many weeks ago about the gentleman that has opened a peat bog uh, between uh, Casadega, or no, I'm sorry, between uh, Stockton and uh, Fredonia and the problems he had to go through in order to get a permit. Ah, permits. A magic thing happened. Not only did we get a state wetland law, we got a federal wetland law. In 1983, the state of New York filed papers and notified every property owner in Chautauqua County, covering some 6.6% of the area of the county, that they owned a wetland. And that was all that they were involved in, was notifying them that they owned a wetland and that their wetland would be classified in one of four categories. Uh, the New York state law said that generally a wetland had to be 12.4 acres. However, if you have a unique wetland with unique and threatened plant species or animal species that live in there on a residential basis, the wetland could be smaller. The Commissioner of Conservation could do that. Uh, the other thing that happened was that there was a 100-foot buffer put around any boundary that was described. And any time any activity was to take place, of filling particularly in those areas, they had to get a permit from the state of New York first. And we administered that Wetland Act for several years. The federal government had a Wetland Act that they'd done nothing with. And then all of a sudden they came out with wetland designations using 1977 and 19, through 1981 aerial photography. And they had no minimum size of a wetland. Any stream, any rivulet, any drainage that carried moisture in it 
a majority of the year was a wetland. Then they also went about using the authority that was given to them by the Congress to designate all of the plants that were indicators of wetlands and all of the soils that were indicators of wetlands. And then we get into the question of growing season. And when a area is covered with water or saturated with water during the growing season, April, September, we probably have a wetland. And if you're interested in knowing about whether or not you own a piece of wetland, there is a book that is available. It's a Chautauqua County document. I think I've referenced it before. It's the Soil Survey of Chautauqua County, New York, uh, done by the United States Department of uh, Agriculture as part of the uh, program uh, of soil management and agricultural practices here in Chautauqua County. Uh, Every acre of land in Chautauqua County has been classified under this. And if you go into the definitions and look at hydric soils, those are soils that are saturated or may in some instances be uh, over topped with water part of the year, uh, it'll describe it in the text of the particular soil. So you can begin to understand whether or not you own a wetland. And the reason I say that you the individuals should be interested in knowing whether or not you own a wetland is it is, is your responsibility under the federal law to know whether or not you own a wetland or possess a wetland area. The uh, number of people in Chautauqua County have come up short. The Corps of Engineers is the administrator of the federal wetland laws. I could get into a long diatribe as to whether or not the rules and regulations that the Corps of Engineers adopted were adopted according to law, uh, but we won't digress. We, we could spend hours on that one in, in a, of itself. But today, you are responsible to know whether or not you own a wetland. And the administration of it is done partially through the New York State Department of Conservation and partially through the Corps of Engineers. Uh, it used to be that we worried about whether or not we were in the Pittsburgh office or the Buffalo office of it for administration purposes because they interpreted the rules and regulations a bit differently and one was more stringent or strict than the other. Imagine, if you own a piece of land and you've got skunk cabbage on it, you've got a wetland. Uh, if you've got a, a land that in April you can't walk on because there's water, it's water saturated, you've got a wetland. Uh, and it's amazing how much of the soil of Chautauqua County uh, can fall in that category. The fact of the matter is the amount of wetland is dis distinguished by the state of New York and the amount of land distinguished by the, the federal regulations is entirely different and I've never had the time nor the energy to measure up how much additional land is, falls under the wetland designation. And then depending upon that designation was based on aerial interpretation of plant community and other uh, topographic features, uh, there are still other areas of the county that are wetlands uh, that are not on that map. In fact, in several instances when I was still active in county government, uh, people that didn't want something to happen in a particular municipality would raise the question, well, aren't you changing wetlands? Uh, therefore, you've got to have a state or a federal permit. And of course, we'd have to go through the, the whole process of uh, dealing with that particular question. And there are wetlands that may be important that are very small. There are also a number of wetlands that we created uh, when we built roads and we built bridges. We didn't pay much attention. We put a large enough culvert or drainage feature through it so that it wouldn't erode the structure, but we didn't necessarily look at what we were doing to the wetland when we uh, were involved in that particular action. So today, you and I are responsible for understanding whether or not we own a wetland, and I would tell you that you cannot do anything on your wetland without a permit. I shouldn't say that. You can hunt, you can fish, you can hike, you can walk. You can probably create board paths and that type of thing. But to suggest that you can run uh, logging equipment across the wetland without a permit is a wrong assumption. To suggest that you can dig in the wetland to create a pond, I understand now that is a wrong assumption. You have to have a permit for that. The other part of the topic for today was floodplain. 
In the floodplains of Chautauqua County, again, if you look at the wetlands map, are basically in those areas where uh, it appears blue-gray. And if we can get a, a look at that again, there we are. Uh, the, wet, the floodplains that are not shown on this map are the ones that are in the uh, Jamestown and Lakewood urban area and very close to the edge of the lake because we're talking about a very, very small dimensioned area around the edge of the lake. But uh, the floodplains of Chautauqua County are basically the blue-gray areas. They very definitely coincide with wetlands in the vast majority of instances. In 1969, federal flood insurance was uh, adopted under the Nixon administration, and people were allowed the opportunity to buy federally subsidized flood insurance to protect their properties if they were in floodplains. However, there was a little sticker. The municipality in which they lived had to adopt rules and regulations to manage floodplains. Now, that was very disruptive to a number of communities that said, we don't want the federal government in our hair. And we have some municipalities in Chautauqua County that have uh, allowed that authority and responsibility to go to the uh, state for administrative purposes. There's no use picking on those political areas, but there are some places in Chautauqua County that are that way. Uh, we have floodplain maps for every municipality in Chautauqua County. The village clerk or the town clerk should have those floodplain maps. If they do not have those floodplain maps, uh, you can get assistance dealing with the question of floodplain and floodplain insurance by calling the Chautauqua County Department of Planning and asking for Dave Phillips, who happens to be the, the expert on that particular uh, topic. Also, if you are interested in wetlands in general, there are 15-minute USGS topograph I'm sorry, seven and a half minute USGS topographic maps showing the designated wetlands as designated by the state of New York and as designated by the federal government. In those instances, they were filed with the county clerk of each county in the state of New York. However, again, if you want access to these maps, um, go to the Department of Planning in Mayville. Ask for Dave Phillips, and he'll help you out with the question of wetland and wetland designation. I had forgotten that earlier in the presentation. Now we'll get back over to the floodplains. The floodplains, to give you an idea of floodplain area, in 1976, I did a snow survey and I went to Wanda Gustafson and I said, Wanda, we're going to have a flood because we've got between four and a half and five and a half inches of snow in the snowpack. And if we have a typical thaw and meltdown, uh, Jamestown and the shores of Chautauqua Lake and Faulkner are going to get wet. And we actually had a, a meeting of local officials to decide how we were going to share, oh, what audacity, we were going to share the, the, the flooding problem. If you remember that year, uh, uh, Brooklyn Square got inundated. The, the Shadowcoin River flowed at 2,200 cubic feet per second. Its normal bank high flow is 1,270 cubic feet per second. Uh, so we got a good designation of floodplains. And by the way, the floodplain maps were made with the, if I haven't mentioned it, are made with the participation of local government. They weren't done off in some blue sky place. But when they got through in that blue sky place publishing, the, the, the accuracy of the maps became very difficult. In Chautauqua County, slowly but surely, a number of the governments, in order to allow their constituency to have federal and flood insurance, began to adopt the rules and regulations to administer uh, those regulations. However, in one or two instances, the code enforcement officer was felt that it was totally unconstitutional that these people should be denied the right to build in the floodplain. So it took several years before all building inspectors in Chautauqua County realized that they had a responsibility to keep people from building in the floodplain. Around the shores of Chautauqua Lake, we have proposed that the uh, people building around the shores any day they want to go out and look at the lake elevation, put down a stilling box, 
and measure that elevation and convert that elevation up onto their property, they can do that by looking at the Post Journal's uh, weather report up in the, on the right, or left hand corner of the second page every day. It tells you what the lake elevation is uh, to within a tenth of a foot. Uh, then you can decide to build. We have recommended, the planning board and the planning department has recommended that because of wave action, that no one should build a living space or a storage space or a utility space below an elevation of 1,313.5 feet above mean sea level. Realize that the summer elevation of Chautauqua Lake nominally is 1,308. So we're suggesting that you build five feet above the normal stilled waters of the lake and that in the vast majority of instances, in fact, the 100-year storm for Chautauqua Lake is 1310.2 or 0.1, depending upon which municipal uh, floodplain map you look at. So we have that responsibility to keep the floodplain undeveloped. And in that 1976 flood, we had 825 or 845 homes around the shores of Chautauqua Lake that were surrounded by water. We had a number of homes down in the village of Faulkner that their basements all got flooded. There was absolutely nothing we could do to protect those people. Uh, in fact, we couldn't protect anybody because Warner Dam, if, if we had stopped the water flowing down the Shadowcoin River, we just raised the water higher uh, in Chautauqua Lake and threatened those 845 property owners even more than uh, they were threatened. Uh, the Corps of Engineers suggests that there was one basement flooded, but uh, I don't know where that is because I sent a team out after Tropical Storm Agnes and went around and measured the first floors of all of the homes that were in the normal floodplain of Chautauqua Lake. Tropical Storm Agnes, I've got to tell you about that storm because it gave us something very special and unusual and unique in New York State. As an aftermath, we asked that we put out and create a series of maps around the shores of the lake that showed the 1310 contour line, which would be one-tenth of a foot below the 100-year storm level. And we created those maps. And those maps are available in the County Department of Planning. And those maps can be used to correct uh, your banker or the Corps of Engineers or anybody else when it comes to saying whether or not you need flood insurance. Uh, my family, as I've mentioned before, has a cottage on the lake and has had a cottage on the lake since about 1905. Uh, there's a cottage that was built back of the, the family cottage by one of the relatives that is 13 feet above the elevation of the lake, and yet because of its location uh, and interpretation of the uh, federal flood map says that this property has to have federal flood insurance. Well, we were able to take the maps that we created after Tropical Storm Agnes and were able to uh, convince the mortgagor or mortgagee, mortgagor, uh, that flood insurance wasn't necessary. Our view has changed totally on floodplains. Floodplains are important places. They store water. We have wetlands that store water. We have wetlands that support a fantastic amount of game and, and wildlife activity. And they are important in the hydrological cycle of the region, not just Chautauqua County or not just the village of Mayville or the city of Dunkirk. And we've got to keep people out of both of them. We've got to preserve them and let them function as they are. In a number of instances, wetlands also become great purifiers of water. In a number of instances in the United States, they take the effluent from sewage treatment plants that have been treated as far as we can afford to treat it, and they run them into large wetland ponds or into wetlands themselves and let the wetlands do the rest of the job of removing the chemistry uh, from the effluent waters. It's part of our water resource system and we've got to pay more and more attention to it and you and I each have a responsibility in doing so. <laughs>